Hey, beloved saints. Whew, starting to get sore. So, I'm trying to do part three. This is about Michael Bowen's book uh, called I Never Knew You, showing how most of the big preachers preach another gospel. So, uh, we've done the first one, which is the intro with Joel Osteen at the end, which was long. I apologize. Then we had uh, um, CBN and Pat Robertson. And now we're going to go to Rick Warren. So, uh, the plan, again, this is not to attack these people. I'm sure they're good people. This is just to expose the gospel message is not biblical. Plan of salvation, according to Rick Warren. When you want real sugar in your coffee, you do not want sugar substitutes because they simply won't suffice. You want the real thing. Natural cane sugar is a choice of sweetener for most people who drink coffee, but too much sugar is a bad thing. Uh, of course. But those artificial chemical-based sweeteners such as aspartame in particular can literally wreak havoc upon your health and worsen existing health conditions. Similarly, it is common knowledge among Bible scholars that Satan and his legions of demons are able to perform tremendous, albeit limited, miracles and wonders in order to deceive people from ever knowing the truth about salvation. Essentially, Satan provides sugar substitutes, whereas God only provides the real thing. Let us consider the account of when Moses appeared before Pharaoh. By the way, I'm just going to give you a, kind of a, a cliff notes of what's going on here. Okay, Janus and Jambres withstood Moses. Uh, they uh, could mimic the miracles of God. Uh, Moses' staff turned into a serpent. Their staffs turns into serpents, but Moses' snake ate them. All right. Then they turn uh, Moses turned the Nile into blood, and uh, those guys mimicked it. Uh, but uh, after a while, they couldn't keep up with God's miracles and had to admit, "Hey, we, we uh, we're limited in power here." So it's mentioned in Scripture that uh, Janus and Jambres are the names of the two magicians. That's how we know their names. Uh, now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, because in uh, Exodus, it's not mentioned their names. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. The miracles that were done by other powers through popular Christian author and personality Rick Warren include the creation of a substitute gospel message, as well as the imprisonment of entire churches around the world that have been chained by the ideologies contained within his book, The Purpose Driven Life. Warren is a good moral man, by the way, Satan's ministers are ministers of righteousness, who possesses many admirable qualities. He speaks very highly of these people and just condemns the gospel they preach. We're not trying to speak evil of these people, and he even admits it's spirits behind these people. It's not them. Uh, and he says, I'm calling attention to the abilities that Satan and his demons have in polluting the gospel message of Christ the same way. Those demons polluted the water through Janus and Jambres in that passage from Exodus. Uh, and he says, other pastors and teachers I mentioned in this book, it's not to come against them. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places, That's Ephesians 6, 12. Warren is not the problem. The powers behind Warren are the problem. He says he likes Rick Warren, but he's at eternal odds at his plan of salvation. He said, if you visit his Saddleback Church website, by the way, I went to Saddleback College, and click upon the link, begin a relationship with Jesus, you'll be taken to a page with three different videos And at the time this chapter was written, at that time. We don't know if it's still like that. Choose the video entitled, What Does It Mean to Follow Christ? All right, first of all, I just want to remind you, you're not saved because you follow Jesus. You're saved because he died for you, that he was buried and he rose again, and through his precious blood, your sins are washed away. God imputes his righteousness on you and gives you eternal life because you've trusted in the work of his son. Okay? That is the simplicity in Christ. It is being corrupted by adding our works to it. And you'll see how subtly they do that and how right it sounds. It's why these people are loved by the world. So, basically what he says most everything he says is real world and virtually no fault can be found in his masterful delivery of popular psychology mixed with secular humanism and semi-biblical principles. Uh, 
It's all very warm and will make you feel wonderful about God and about yourself. Warren provides you with exactly what you want to hear. The plan of salvation, according to Rick Warren's video, will be paraphrased to avoid potential copyright infringement. Warren says that Jesus died for you. That's true. Jesus came to give you a better life here and now and in the future. He did say, I came to give life, life more abundantly. Okay. All you need to get into heaven is to realize you can't earn your way into heaven, and heaven is a perfect place, and no sin can enter. Amen to that. See how truth is here? Let's see what happens. Warren says you have to be perfect to get into heaven. Amen. You do. Uh, you're only perfect, by the way, when God imputes his perfection, his righteousness on you. Just as Jesus had no sin but became sin, you become God's righteousness in Christ. All right? Because you trusted in him. All right. That's how you're perfect. He says that Jesus died for us and he lived a perfect life. That's true. As an example for us to follow. Uh, he he kept the law. He fulfilled the law. God's law had to be fulfilled. To show us how to live our lives. Yeah, he is an example, essentially. Warren says that we must believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, he is. Narrow is the way because Jesus is the way. It's not a process person. Just like he said he was. All this is true. Warren says you have to believe in Jesus and you have to receive Jesus. That's true. You do. As many as received him, to them give you power to come to God. Believe on his name. To do this, Warren says you must admit to Jesus you need him and you must admit your mistakes to them, him and you must tell him you want to turn from your way of life and live a brand new life. No, 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 no. That's where it goes crazy. Eh, goes off the road there. No, you don't have to tell him uh, I'm going to stop my sins and live better for salvation. That's you. Okay, you got to get saved. Christ is in you. The Holy Spirit's in you. Then he starts that work in you. Okay, you don't do it before you're saved, and you don't make some promise you can't keep. And again, you don't give your life to Jesus for salvation. He's just going to crucify it. It's because he gave his life for you. And it's not following Jesus that does that. Uh, we have uh, disciples following Jesus that were never saved because they never believed. It says he, didn't, he knows who didn't believe and who would betray him. So there are people that follow Jesus and even did miracles in his name and never believed and were never saved. <clears throat> so that's not true. That's where it goes off the rails, okay? So he's what he said the, the, the fault here is saying that you have to promise to live a new life. Okay. Warren says that repent means to change your mind, which is true. From your way of living to the J Jesus wants you to no, 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 no. That's your works. That's your works. Repentance unto life, repentance to the knowledge of the truth is to turn to Christ in faith. Stop trusting in you and trust in what he did. Okay? When Peter told those Jews to repent, they had just crucified him. They were saying, oh gosh, you, we just crucified the Lord of glory. What do we do? Repent. Change your mind. Now believe on him. All right? So, he said, Warren says you must pray. No, you'll see a sinner's prayer nowhere. You won't see it with Philippian jailer. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. He preached to him and his whole family, Christ crucified. They all believed they were saved. No prayers. Nothing about it. You won't see a sinner's prayer anywhere. Philip and the eunuch. He prayed, showed him Isaiah 53, confirmed that it was Jesus. He believed Jesus is the Son of God. He said, hey, what's preventing me to be baptized? He said, hey, there's some water. Philip said, hey, if you believe with all thine heart, thou mayest. Okay. No sinner's prayer. Won't see it. And then invite Jesus into your heart. Do you see they're asking for things that automatically come with salvation? Jesus does live within your heart once you've trusted in him. See, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The seed of Christ is in you. So, Jesus lives within you as the temple of God once you've trusted in him. So you don't have to ask for that. You believe on him and that happens. Okay? So, uh, inviting Jesus into your heart is a bunch of nonsense. Uh, you won't see that in scripture either. In this sample prayer, he tells you to admit to God that you don't understand it all. By the way, you need to understand it all. Okay? You need to know why you're trusting Christ. You need to know what his blood did. You were purchased with his blood. That's what Paul is constantly trying to show these people. Through Adam, death came. Through his disobedience, we all die. And through the last Adam, his obedience, we have life everlasting. And so his blood purchased anyone who trusts in him. It paid for the sin of the whole world if you just receive it by faith. Okay? So you do need to understand it all. All right, that's how you have assurance, and that's how you become a servant with joy and peace that surpasses all understanding because you do understand it. All right, so that's a little kooky. I don't understand it all. 
Really don't know why I trust Jesus, but I'm just going to trust. That's just crazy. All right? Now, you don't have to understand, you know, all the Bible. But you need to understand why you're trusting in Christ, what he did for you. He said, admit to God you don't understand it all, but you realize something's missing from your life and that you want a better life. Well, you know, he can't give that to you, but being a saved person, those that live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. So it's not always easy to get a better life for you now. That you want a relationship with Christ. Well, you have one once you're saved. You have hope you come boldly to the throne of grace. You can ask anything in Jesus' name, and he'll give it to you. Warren says to tell Jesus as best as you know how to, that you open your life to him. But is that salvation? No, it's not. Warren says to ask Jesus to forgive you and to come into your life and to have Jesus make himself real to you and give you a purpose in life. Preach the gospel to every creature. Bam! There's your purpose. He told you. All right, so he's telling you, that you need to ask him to forgive you, which he's already done through his blood, if you just accept it. Make himself real to you. Well, that comes, faith come out here and here by the word of God. So you need to be in the word of God for that. And uh, he will come into your life once you trust him. And your purpose in life is to preach the gospel to every creature and to be a light to the world. He already told you what your purpose was, regardless of what you're doing for a living or whatever. All right, Warren says that if you meant this with all your heart, the angels are now rejoicing over the fact you just accepted Christ into your life. Uh, he's just, he's mixing discipleship with salvation. It's very disturbing because every single one of these guys have done that so far. That is the, and then also, wait a minute. He tells you you need to join a church to help you grow. That's true. And that you need to make your decision to follow Jesus public. Okay, more works of righteousness. Uh, that is the paraphrased version of the plan of salvation, according to Rick Warren. You don't have to join a church to be saved, people. Now, in order, let me see, to remain in a relationship with Christ, now you got to worry about losing it. Now, see, if you think you can lose it, that means you think you maybe got it by grace in some works, and then you're keeping it by your works. Because what else could you, it's God, he saves you to the uttermost. Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. I don't, he saves you. He's the one that preserves you you know he's faithful he keeps you safe because he's faithful all right it says warren in fact states this very thing in his best-selling book the purpose driven life yet he neglects to mention this aspect in clear terms during this particular video uh he's saying that we're led away like the pied piper it's an irresistible tune and he says uh once people hear what he has to say they're hooked Warren digs down into the core of individual beings, down into our deepest desires of wanting to forget our past, our mistakes and failures, of wanting to make our present lives the best they can be, and by telling us if we invite Christ into our hearts and give ourselves over to him, that we will go to heaven. However, like the fictional Pied Piper, Warren leads every mesmerized believer of this false gospel to a place of drowning, but not in a river of water. Instead, is the eternal lake of fire according to the Bible. Jesus Christ offers a very different plan of salvation. Jesus says that the will of the Father was for everyone to recognize Christ as the Messiah and to believe on him alone for the gift of everlasting life. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day, John 6, 40. To make it ever more succinct, Jesus then said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath, that's present tense, everlasting life, John 6, 47. Did he lie? Well, no, he just didn't tell you the whole thing. Oh, okay. All right, the gospel message is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When we believe that Jesus died for our sins and came back to life three days later, he knows it. He knows all your thoughts. He knows the very instant you believe his gospel message. And you know what? He'll give you the Holy Spirit the moment you've trusted in him. He knows it. When they believed, they were saved that very same instant. They did not pray prayers of salvation, asking Jesus into their hearts. They did not commit their lives to the Lordship of Christ. They did not determine to follow him all the days of their lives in obedience to his Lordship of the practice of discipleship. By the way, Demas, having loved this present world, has forsaken him, uh, discipleship. He didn't lose salvation. He just stopped being a disciple, probably went to his family, probably missed his family. And stopped his service in the service of Christ. Does that mean Jesus takes back his salvation? 
No, of course not. There's a lot of people that followed Jesus and never believed. They did not determine to follow him all the days of their lives in obedience to his lordship or the practice of discipleship. They simply believed on Christ alone as their savior. See, it doesn't matter how successful a ministry is or how beautiful and satisfying their particular plan of salvation may be. If what they say about salvation does not match what Christ said about salvation, their plan is counterfeit and falls under the label of, quote, an accursed Message, Galatians 1, 8, 9 says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you, than that you have received, let him be accursed. Double whammy curse right there on him. If you were to ask Paul how to be saved, he would have told you the same thing he told the Philippian jailer. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is the one place in the Bible that is clear. Do you think God forgot something? Oh, well, there's a lot entangled. No, it's not. It tells you he preached Christ crucified to the whole house, and they believed, and they got saved. Quit making it up. All right. Now, he told Nicodemus in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what happens when you believe in him? You won't perish. You have everlasting life. Did Jesus lie? Well, no, he just didn't tell you the whole. Just stop. Just They, they just make up stuff. It's crazy. Believe means to trust. It's to take God at his word. It is to believe that what God promised he's able to perform, just as Abraham believed God and he was counting him for righteousness. He was persuaded that what God promised he could perform. That's how it's described in scripture, and we go by what the Bible says, right? That's what we do. Okay. If you believe Jesus Christ alone as your Savior, you will be saved. If you choose to believe a counterfeit version of the gospel message that includes any works or behavioral changes on your part, you will stand before Christ at the great white throne judgment, and this will be your fate. By the way, you'll say, I never knew you because you're bringing your works to him. Revelation 20, 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. You want to bring your works for salvation? You'll be judged according to your works and you'll fall short. All right. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell, that's the grave, uh, Hades, place of the dead, dwelling, delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. That's what happens when you rely on your works. Okay. You got to rely on the work of Jesus so you're not judged on your works. All right? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You're in the book of life when you trust in what Christ did alone. Okay, don't let anybody, you know, twist the, the simple gospel. He warned about the subtlety that beguiled Eve. We're warned of the leaven of the Pharisees. Look, go to my first video in this series. It's the introduction. It's the one that has Joel Osteen at the end. I'm sorry it's very long, but you'll understand it. I, I give you some scriptures about the subtlety, how subtle they can change things. You know, uh, and then it goes in the intro of what this man endured before he became born again. He even had a changed life and all that, but he was never saved. And he never had assurance. And thank God he didn't. Because he'd have had assurance in a false plan of salvation. But it amazes me how many people will fight for their tradition in a false plan of salvation. And despise the true gospel. Um, Alright guys, I will move on to the next one. I might take a little break before we move on to the plan of salvation according to John Hagee. Alright, God bless. <laughs>